What is up, people? Van from the Vanverse Gaming Channel here, bringing you another video on Salasa Crown of the Magister. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I want to do a top 10 tips video for the Palace of Ice DLC. I was thinking of doing a tips video for Crown of the Magister and for Lost Valley, and we'll see how this one does before we go down that road. So without further ado, let me give you the 10 tips that I think will help you that I wish I knew when I started the Palace of Ice DLC. Now, these are not in any order, but I feel these are probably important, and there's probably a lot more, but we're just going to do 10 because it's called a top 10 video for a reason. So let's begin. All right, number one. You have the option to import characters into your DLC game. So... Whatever characters you're importing, whatever save you're importing them from, if you're not importing your entire party, make sure to move everything off of all of your characters on that save to the characters you're importing into your new game to play the DLC. That way they can bring all that gear over with them and then share it with your new characters that are fresh level 10s that you just create. So that is tip number one. Tip number two, cold resist is pretty much a must in this DLC. Fire resist is not a bad idea either. So please make sure that you are running snow dwarves, running tieflings, have some kind of cold or fire resist on your characters, and it's worth wasting one of your attunement slots to attune to something that gives you some kind of cold or fire resist. It just will drastically change how you handle some of these fights because not only is the weather a pain in the ass, but also there are a lot of creatures that do fire and cold damage to you. So having resist to those are great. And contrary to that, don't use fire and cold damage spells on a lot of these creatures because they're going to be resistant to it. So just keep that in mind. Cold, fire, bad. Okay. Tip number three. Counter spell. That's it. Counter spell. They are some really strong casters. You can cast seventh and eighth level spells. Well, so can they. So you don't want to get hit by a delayed blast fireball or a uh, frozen sphere or a ridiculous hard hitting spell. So the way to help is counter spell it or use spell ward, which is an eighth level cleric spell. This thing is amazing. You just put this spell ward down. You just stand in the damn thing and not one spell can get into your little bubble. You can cast spells out of your bubble. Spells can't come into your bubble. Amazing. Okay, tip number four. Kill the Incubus, the Vrox, and the stupid flying Sora Cat dude whose name's like uh, a Krathsha or something like that. Kill them. These things will mess up your day. The Vrox will stun your whole damn party. The Incubus will literally charm one of your guys to fight against you. And they always pick the guy like the wizard that can just melt your whole party. And that flying sword cat guy, the crash off or whatever, he'll just spew AOEs down on you while he's flying. So all of them must die right out of the game. Speaking of flying, that leads me to tip number five. Flying is great. Have fly potions. Cast fly if you have to and use a, a concentration spell. But give your melees the ability to fly so they can travel around the map and they can kill all the creatures that are flying as well and more importantly get to the creatures that are pelting you from ranged that they purposefully make it difficult for you to get to them to make the make it more challenging combat flying super important okay tip number six i do believe loot i'm sorry look at all of the vendors in the main white rock city after act one there's a vendor for all five factions depending on which vendor has the best gear that you want is the faction quest you should probably go on because you have to build your you know favor with each faction to unlock different things within that faction vendor so very important i recommend looking at the vendors first to see what gear they have and what you want and then doing that quest line for that faction and you can tell which faction matches which quest line is because they have their own little flags and they're all colored and you know which one's which. Okay, I think we're on tip number seven. Conserve your spell slots and use consumables and concentration spells that allow you to do damage consistently over time. 
The reason I say this is you only get one level seven and one level eight spell. I think you only get one level six spell. So one, six, seven, and eight spell. That's it. If you use that and it's not epic, there's a lot of times where you're going to be a while before you get another long rest. And there's a lot of times in the fights where they keep sending more waves at you. So keep it in mind that there's definitely the rule of attrition when it comes to this and that they're going to try and make you burn all your fancy schmancy spells so that it makes the combat more difficult because if you have all of your spell slots your team is going to be powerful but once you burn them you're screwed so just keep that in mind use spells like sun you know sunbeam and, and conjuration spells and wall of fire and spike growth and things like that to do damage so you're not using, utilizing your spells all the time. Very, very important. And use consumables. This is the first DLC in Solasta that I had to use consumables. Granted, I played on the highest difficulty, but I had to use consumables. So use them, buy them, scrolls, wands, potions, do it. Okay, tip number eight. Talk to all the NPCs that have the little blue bubble above their head. There's NPCs throughout all of Solasta had those blue bubbles above their head. And half of them, if you didn't have a quest for it, it didn't matter, right? They had to have, when you went to the mini-map, or the map, you, you could see a little yellow exclamation point above their head. That's how you knew. But in this version, they don't have yellow exclamation points above their head, but they might still have a side quest for you. So just keep that in mind. If you see an NPC with a blue chat bubble, talk to them. It might open a side quest. It might take you to somewhere fun. You might kill something and get a legendary weapon. I don't know. I just recommend doing it. I could be wrong, but that's what happened to me. Okay. Um, tip number nine. Spread out. Spread out. This campaign is designed to AoE the crap out of you. Every creature, well not every creature, but in every fight, you are going to be fighting creatures that do significant AoE damage or abilities that will affect your entire party. So by spreading out, you will prevent all of your party from getting stunned or all of your party from getting killed from that giant ice spell or fireball or whatever it is. So just keep that in mind. Spread out your characters. Give some fly. Give some invisibility. Do what you can to prevent them from all being nice and huddled together and taking damage because I can tell you that's what the enemies are going to be doing in the combat as well. Okay, tip number 10. I saved my best for last. Get Conjure Celestial and Conjure Melek. Melek is by far the most fun conjuration guy ever. You get to control him. He flies. He has ridiculous range. He gets two attacks. He does radiant damage. He's just amazing. So those are my top 10 tips for the Palace of Ice DLC. If you like the tips, Please let me know and I'll make a tips video for the rest of the game and also for some of the different, like the Lost Valley DLC. And then leave me any comments below if you think there were tips that I missed that would have been helpful for you. This is Van from the Vaniverse Gaming Channel. Thank you for watching. Cheers and peace out.